If there's one thing that Team Ninja games are known for, it's their deep and oftentimes punishing combat mechanics, and Rise of the Ronin is no exception. This is not a game where you can expect to mash the attack button mindlessly and come out the other side unscathed, so if you want to learn the nuance to Rise of the Ronin's stance of combat, here are our essential combat tips. First, let's go over the basics of combat. Combat is tied to a key meter, which is basically your stamina. Every time you swing your weapon, you'll expend some key, and when you successfully block an attack, you won't take any physical damage, but you will lose key. If your key meter gets depleted, your stance will be broken, and you'll be left wide open to big attacks or combos. Show me all you got. This means you really have to be mindful of how much key you have both when you're on the offensive and on the defensive as well. If your bar is low, even if you've got an enemy reeling, you should disengage and wait until you have a full meter again before you go back to swinging. The last thing you want to do is exhaust yourself with attacks before realizing that you don't have any key left over to defend against a sudden retaliation. One of the big questions when it comes to Rise of the Ronin's combat is when it is better to block or use a counter spark, henceforth referred to as a parry. In a perfect world, you'd want to just parry everything, but that's easier said than done in a game where combos can range anywhere between 2 and, like, 15 hits. Realistically, unless you're confident in your knowledge of the parry timing of a specific combo that an enemy is using, you'll want to be blocking. Trying to parry an unknown string of attacks is a recipe for disaster, because you'll only stagger the enemy if you parry the last hit of the combo, and every time you miss time a parry, you're going to eat a hit. The exception to this rule is enemy martial skill attacks, which are those attacks enveloped in a red aura. These attacks are almost always unblockable, and must be either parried or dodged. One really important tip is that if you look carefully, there will always be a red flash to indicate the parry timing. Press the parry button when you see this red flash, and if you're quick enough, you'll deflect it and put the enemy in a panicked state where your own martial skills are more effective. These martial skills are the attacks that you activate when you hold R1 before attacking. Keep in mind that while blocking, your key will recharge much more slowly and your movement will be restricted so let the block button go when you get the chance. Another thing to note is that while you cannot cancel an attack into a guard, you can cancel an attack into a parry. So if you commit to an attack and realize at the last second that your target is going to power through to deliver one of their own, you can immediately switch to defense by canceling its animation with a parry. There are a ton of different combat styles in Rise of the Ronin, each with their own unique attacks and martial skills. Each of these combat styles falls into one of five combat style types, which almost have a rock-paper-scissors-like relationship with each other. If you go to the combat styles tab in the pause menu, you can see your unlocked styles for each weapon. By hovering over one and pressing square, you can see the type of that particular style. The three main style types are Ten, Chi, and Jin, and each of these styles is strong, weak, or equal to the others. You can see these type advantages and disadvantages in real time by checking the symbol next to an enemy's life bar. If it's blue and has arrows pointing up, your currently equipped style is strong against theirs. If it's grey, the advantage is neutral. And if it's red with arrows pointing downwards, that means your current weapon style is weak to what your opponent is using. There's also the none style type, which is applied when you are unarmed, which is neither effective nor ineffective against any style. And the shinobi style type, which is ineffective against all styles, but will always heavily stagger an enemy when you land a successful parry. You can use shinobi martial arts to activate critical hits on enemies in spectacular ways, an excellent reward for fighting while at a disadvantage. You can change your combat style on the fly by holding R1 and moving the right stick to the left, right or down. It's not the end of the world to fight against an enemy with combat style type advantage over you, but you should generally aim to use a style that has an advantage over your opponents, or at the very least, try to settle for neutral. 
If you're unsure which styles will be effective or ineffective against the enemy you're currently facing, hold the R1 button down and look at the stance icons that appear in the lower right of the screen to see each stance's effectiveness at once. Alongside the vast number of weapon types at your disposal is a robust selection of ranged weapons, called sub-weapons in this game. These weapons are either quiet and traditional, or bombastic and technologically modern. Bows and earthenware balls are ideal tools for those who want to stay undetected. Bows will kill most enemies stealthily from a distance if you hit them in the head, and earthenware balls allow you to distract enemies and lure them towards or away from specific locations. Both of these weapons can have their ammunition modified to add certain effects via the use of bolstering items, which can make them more useful in open conflict situations. Shurikens are the third traditional sub-weapon, and because they cannot be manually aimed, they're best used as quick combo extenders mid-fight. They don't do much damage, but they can help to keep an enemy's key meter under pressure. Now for the firearms. The rifle is similar to the bow in that it deals a lot of damage at range, especially to enemies that you hit in the head, but it is much louder so expect to draw some attention when using this one. Handguns are similar to shurikens in effectiveness, as they share the same aiming limitations. Use them mid-fight to keep the pressure up on an enemy, or to interrupt and panic them by shooting them while they are mid-strike. After doing the A Lucky Find Put to Use side quest for Igoshichi, you will unlock the use of a fire pipe, which is basically a traditional style of flamethrower. This weapon is short range and limits your movement, so you'll want to be careful when you use it, but it's great for setting off explosive barrels and applying status effects to a group of enemies all at once. Aside from your sub-weapons, don't forget you can also use your grappling hook to attack enemies while at a distance from them. You can grab them and pull them close by pressing the grappling hook button, or you can grapple in towards an enemy by grappling them while in mid-air. Combine this mid-air attack with other skills that increase your mid-air damage or unlock a mid-air parry to add another layer of versatility to your combat. One of the core techniques to Rise of the Ronin's combat is the Blade Flash, which is somewhat similar to how key pulses worked if you played the Neo games. To do a Blade Flash, you need to press R1 immediately after an attack, which will clean the blood off your weapon and replenish some of your key bar. The amount it restores depends on how full the blood gauge is, which can be viewed as the bar underneath your weapon on the right side of the screen. Using blade flashes is an important way to make sure that you have enough key to both keep up the aggression while you're attacking, and also block enemy attacks when you need to switch to defense. If you don't get into the habit of using them regularly, you'll find yourself unable to punish while an enemy is vulnerable, and you'll frequently have your stance broken when you try to block an attack without having enough stamina. Early in the Strength skill tree, you can unlock the Flash Attack skill. This allows you to swap weapons mid-combo by pressing R1 and D-pad up. Instead of interrupting your combo, your character will now seamlessly switch to your second weapon. The main reason why you'd want to do this is to keep a combo flowing. Flash Attacks greatly fill the blood gauge of the weapon that you switch to, allowing you to restore a large portion of your key by using a Blade Flash once you switch weapons. By skillfully combining blade flashes with flash attacks, you can extend your offense far beyond what would normally be possible, while also keeping key left over in case you need to switch to defense. When your weapon proficiency with a certain type increases to level 5, you will unlock the Violent Gale move for that weapon type. This move allows you to dynamically switch between weapon stances mid-combo, similar to the flash attack. Simply swap weapon stances with R1 and the right stick as you normally would, but mid-combo, and the character will change stances while keeping up the attack. Now you can swap stances if you want to use a certain move that only one of your stances has access to, or if your enemies start changing stances but without dropping your combo. There are a number of status ailments that you can inflict on your foes, and that can be inflicted upon you. Burn and Poison behave as you would expect, slowly whittling away someone's health for the duration of the effect. The burn effect can be reduced by dodging. Flammable doesn't do any damage outright, but it makes characters incredibly susceptible to burn damage of any type. 
Paralysis significantly breaks a character's stance, rendering these characters temporarily immobile. The biggest status to watch out for, however, is the Dizzy status, which gets applied when two or more statuses are in effect at once. Whoever is Dizzy will have their combat style automatically set to a disadvantage while simultaneously suffering maximum key damage. They will also be panicked for the duration of the effect. If you want to become a status effect slinging Ronin, Dizzy could become your greatest ally, but watch out for its effects being used on you if you're going up against a lot of varying detrimental effects. Some missions will provide you with an NPC companion who accompanies you for the duration of the mission. You can also choose from a list of Bond characters for some missions to add an additional character to your team. Having allies along for the ride is helpful as enemies will have other people to focus their aggression towards, allowing you to focus on your current adversary or potentially surprise enemies by attacking them from behind. You can also swap between these companion characters and control them at any time. You're taught this at the start of the game with your Blade Twin, but if you spend a lot of time completing open world missions, then it can be easy to forget this trick. Not only does this let you manually come to another character's aid, but you can also always swap to a new character and attack the enemies from behind while they're focusing on your teammates. Keep this strategy in mind if you're stuck on a particularly difficult boss fight. And those are our essential combat tips for Rise of the Ronin but there's more to this game than just combat. Check out our other guides on things the game doesn't tell you or the skills that you should unlock first. You can also find our growing wiki with walkthroughs, tips, and interactive maps, as well as all other things gaming on IGN.com.